All right. So now we're looking then at the <clears throat> at the three closed uh, Newton Coates formulas, uh, and the first of these formulas is called the trapezoid rule. And uh, as I mentioned, we're going to go ahead and derive the trapezoid rule. We'll we'll go all the way through this. And so uh, we have our function, um, and we have the two points A and B, and then we're going to fit a straight line to these two points, and we're going to integrate under that curve. And that is the trape trapezoid rule. There's a lot of different ways that we could do this, but um, the way we're going to do it uh, is uh, using the, the Lagrange uh, interpolating polynomial, and the reason is because then it'll be easier to to do for the this higher order terms. So uh, in doing that, then we just say, well, we're trying to find the integral from a to b of f of x uh, dx, where this is the function f of x. Well, uh, in order to do that, uh, we're going to approximate then f of x with f1 of x, so f1 of x, and so we'll just say that is approximately equal to uh, the integral from a to b of f1 of x dx, where f1 of x is equal to the first order, uh, the first order approximation, and so that would be if we if we use the Newton um, Excuse me. If we use the Lagrange uh, form, and 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 the other thing, before I plug in this Lagrange form, we need to realize that um, x naught equals a, and uh, x one equals b. So then we can use the the notation that we're familiar with, and then we go f of x naught plus f of x1 minus f of x0 over x1 minus x0 and we need to move this over a little bit okay and uh, fix that arrow alright so, and that's times x minus x naught. Right. Okay, so that's the, the formula that, that we need. And, um, and so we just plug that in, and so then we just integrate then from x naught to x1 of f of x naught plus f of x1 minus f of x naught over x1 minus x0 all times x minus x0. Okay, perfect. And and this is, put a big parenthesis around this, use a bracket style, and that's dx, right? Okay, so we're going to go ahead and go through this, but instead of instead of writing it all out by hand, I've gone ahead and typed it up, and so uh, we'll just go through that here then. This is just what I had written previously. f of x is equal to uh, the integral from a to b of f of x dx is approximately equal to, so we, we have the approximation, and using this f1 uh, to approximate it, the first order approximation. Uh, so then, uh, and then just recognizing what that is, so I just plug that in, f of x0 plus f of x1 minus f of x0 over x1 minus x0 times x minus x0, and then dx. And I just um, put in the, the the limits of integration because a is equal to because we're using uh, we're using the endpoints then a is equal to x naught and b equals x one and so then uh, this is what that turns out to be uh, and then actually integrating this we can we can pull any constants out front and then I'm just going to separate this into three different integrals so we're going to integrate uh, uh, this first term. And so that's just going to be the, um, and then we can pull that out front. So that'll be the integral from x naught to x one of one dx uh, times f of x naught, and then we can pull this other term out out front here, and then just integrate this part here. 
So that's the integral then of uh, from x naught to x one of x minus x naught. In turn, we can actually split that again into two different integrals: the integral from x naught to x one of x dx, and the integral from x naught to x one of one dx times x naught. And so then, when we when we go ahead and do that, let's come down here a little bit. Uh, when we go ahead and do that, we get the integral of one dx is just x, and then we have to integrate, uh, evaluate it at the points x naught and x one. Uh, and then uh, the integral of x is x squared over 2. And again, the integral of 1 is just x. All right, so then we just plug in our, our values for x0 and x1. So that'll be f of x0, x1 minus x0, and then f of x1 minus f of x0. So this is just that constant that we term that we had hanging out here. That didn't change at all. And then we, we just plugged in then our... our um, our b, our, our x1 then is just, so that's x1 squared minus x0 squared minus, um, and then we just have our x0, that was, that was the same x0 constant here, and then we have that term then x0 times x1 minus x0. Okay, so now we've actually performed the integration. All we have to do from this point forward is just simplify. So I've gone ahead and, and simplify the only thing. The first thing that we need to do is recognize that x1 squared minus x0 squared, that's just a difference of squares. And so uh, that's going to be x1 minus x0 times x1 plus x0. And you can multiply that out and verify it. Um, but then what we have then is this x1 minus x0 that we can factor out of there, out of there, and also out of here. So we go ahead and factor that out of all three terms. I'm going to slide down here. Okay, so again, we're right here. Um, we're going to factor out this x1 minus x0. Well, actually, before we do that, we can cancel. Well, we factor it out here. We factor it out here. Okay, so then what we can do is we can cancel uh, this uh, with these. So you see that then cancels with this term. Okay. So uh, this is just then the equation written written out again. Okay, the next thing then that we can do is uh, we can take this part here and we can just multiply this x naught by 2 over 2. And so we do that, so we get this um, all in the same, so we can, so we can combine these x naughts here. Um, and then, uh, okay, it looks like I actually wrote that same line twice, no big deal. Uh, same thing here, all right. So then uh, we can continue forward. Uh, we can pull that two out and we can just uh, put that under under this whole thing because that's multiplied part of the numerator. And then we can just put a two here uh, over two because it's just multiplying it by one. So that's what we do here. That's what we do here and we've got then uh, this simplifying out, so x naught minus 2x naught is just minus x naught, so that's x1 minus x naught here. We have this x1 minus x naught here, so we can factor that out of the whole thing and just put all of it over that 2, and then we, we can combine like terms, so we have this 2f of x naught minus f of x naught, so that's just f of x naught, and um, this is, we get the final formula here, x1 minus x naught times f of x naught plus f of x1 all over 2. All right, so that's the derivation for the trapezoid rule. Uh, you could have done that knowing, knowing what this looks like, just going back to the original equation. You could have derived that just knowing the equation of a trapezoid is equal to, uh, you could think of it as the base here times the average height, and that's what it turns out to be. We're, we're averaging the height. We go f of x naught plus f of x1 divided by 2, so we got the average height here and uh, times the base. That's going to be x1 minus x0. So it makes intuitive sense and it also follows the rule here. Um, the nice thing about this is the, uh, the only thing that we have to do differently then to, to derive the, the other newton Coates formulas the, um, is simply to use instead of a first order approximation like we did here, f1 of x, we just use a higher order approximation. And so and that's that's the exact same idea that we use for, for the Newton 
or excuse me, for the Simpsons one third rule, and also for the Simpsons three eighths rule. Both of those are exactly the same. In one case, we put F2 in, and in the other case, we put F3, and we use the Lagrange form again and, and simplify it out, and that's how we come up with these formulas.